Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and in this video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Usually, I am showing you how to um, put together one of my patterns. In this case, this isn't a pattern. This is a pre-printed cotton panel. So this is available in my Spoonflower shop. And if you go to justshinyhappyworld.com and look under fabrics, there is a category called cut and sew. This is one of the cut and sew patterns or cut and sew panels, I should say. So you're gonna get one yard of fabric. I used the organic cotton sateen for mine. I really love the way the colors print on this fabric base and I like the sheen that it has, but you can also use this on any of the fabrics that are 56 inches wide. So another option that is really nice for stockings, there's a velvet, I think it's called Celosia velvet, um, but that also works really well for stockings. But just so you know, what I used here for the examples that you see, this is the organic cotton sateen. And one yard of fabric has all of the pieces that you need to make five, little miniature ornaments, and these are functional stockings, so you could put a little candy or something in them and hang them on your tree. And you get one miniature stocking, which is actually what you're gonna see me putting together in this video, since it's small enough that I can get the entire thing in the video screen and still be close enough that you can see the detail of what I'm doing. And you also get the main attraction is this big stocking, uh, nice big full-size stocking, great for, for using like a regular stocking. So this one has a hanging loop on it, and uh, both this one and the medium one are fully lined with a contrast con contrasting cuff. And the thing that I really, really like about this pattern is that you can have a decorated stocking, a contrasting lining, a contrasting cuff, fully lined, all nicely put together, but you only need to sew one seam all around the entire thing. And that's what I'm gonna show you here. So I'm gonna get this guy out of the way, and I'm just gonna show you uh, on the rest of the fabric that you're getting. So you're getting five little ornaments, and they fill up the side of the, the yard. Then there are some instructions, and this is what we're gonna focus on in this video, and that is the smaller ornament pieces. And this is a little bit of an odd size. If you've made a stocking before, you've probably cut the front as one piece and the lining as one piece and the cuff as one piece. But because I've done it as a cut and sew, we can do all of that in one piece. So you can have a fully lined stocking with a contrasting cuff and you only have to sew one seam. So what I'm gonna do first is cut these pieces out. So you can see there's a little scissor icon on there. Basically, you're just gonna cut both of these pieces out all the way around the edge. And I'm not gonna show that because watching me cut something is pretty boring, but um, I'm gonna cut these pieces out and then come back and show them to you what we're gonna do with the next step. Okay, so I've cut out the two stocking pieces and it's important, don't cut, the, cut them apart between the stocking and the lining color. You wanna leave that all as one piece because the point of this is that we're only gonna to have to sew one seam. While I was at it, I also cut out all the little mini stocking um, pieces. These are gonna make cute little tree ornaments. So I cut all of the pieces out and that is step one. So step two is actually to make the hanging loop. So I'm gonna be showing you the process of sewing this together with the small version of the stocking and everything that you do is identical to the larger version of the stocking that I showed you, except the hanging loop. So I did not include a piece of fabric for the hanging loop on the small stocking because the what you get when you sew the fabric into a loop just felt a little um, thicker and more cumbersome for the small stocking. Um, so if you want to have a hanging loop on your small stocking, I would recommend using a soft piece of ribbon or maybe a piece of cord and you can sew it on there after it's sewn up. But since I've already sewn this piece up, I can't demonstrate it with the exact rectangle that comes printed on the fabric. So I'm going to show it using some of the scraps. So all of the scraps I filled in with this um, blue and blue stripe because again, I didn't want there to be even an inch of wasted anything on this. And I wanted you to be able to use all of the odd bits after you cut the pieces out. 
So there will be a rectangle like this for the hanging loop and you're going to cut it out just around the rectangle and then you're going to fold it in half once the long way and press that. So you're going to press this fold in so you have that as a guide. Then you're going to open it up and you're going to press each side in until it comes to that middle guideline fold. And you're going to press those and then you're going to fold it in half one more time and press it again. And that is what's called double fold tape. So I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine and I'm just going to sew where the two folds come together. I'm just going to sew right down this edge and then I'll have a nice clean finished loop that I could use if I want to on the stocking. So otherwise we are just going to take these two stocking pieces, put them right sides together, if you were using the hanging loop, there's a little star on the pattern. On the larger one, there's a star marking where it would go. It's a bright red star, so you can't miss it, and you would just sandwich that in between those two layers. The other thing that is marked on here is where you're gonna leave open for stuffing. And this is it says it in white. I've changed that, so this is just my test version, and I decided that that was too light. So now that is in bright red and it says leave open for stuffing. So you are going to layer these together. You can pin them if you want to, you don't have to. I do like to pin things like where the different, where the lines match up just to help me get those together. And you're gonna leave open just a couple of inches here where it says leave open for, for turning. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to start at one side of the leave open for turning and I'm going to sew all the way around the foot, up here, down this end of the stocking, around this foot, back up here, and I'm going to stop a couple of inches from where I started. So I've got that little hole that I can turn it right side out at. I'm going to do all of that with a, a, three, a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, it doesn't have to be super exact. If your presser foot has a 3 8 inch seam allowance and you wanna just use your presser foot, go ahead and do that. That is just fine. This isn't anything that needs to be super precise. So I'm gonna go and sew all of that around and then I will come back and show you the next step. Okay, I've done that sewing. So I'm just gonna do a quick recap. So step one was just to cut out the front and back and cut out the hanging loop rectangle if you're using that for the large version. Step two was to fold and press that rectangle like I showed you and then just stitch it right down that edge. Zoom that in closer so you can see that. So I have stitched that together. Now step three was to put your stockings right sides together, sandwiching the hanging loop in between the two layers if you're using that and sew them together all the way around leaving a little bit open for turning it right side out. Now, before we turn it right side out, there's one tricky step that we need to do, and this is a thing that if you've never sewn before, the instructions might be a little bit mystifying. It says to clip the seam allowance in the concave turn curves and turn that right side out and press. So remember, a concave curve is one that curves in, so it's like a cave. So we have a concave curve a little bit in the arch of his foot and then a much stronger curve in where his ankle turns into his foot. So what we're going to do, I'm pull this closer so that you can see it. Let's see if one side looks is easier to see than the other. I think this side is easier to see. So what we're going to do is where that curve is, we're just going to clip into your seam allowance and you want to clip right up to that line of stitching, but not into the line of stitching. So you don't want to clip any of those stitches. So in the arch of the foot, three clips is going to be plenty. In the, the tighter the curve, the, the tighter the curve, the closer together you want your clips to be. So we're going to do a few clips in here in the curve of his ankle. And what this does is it makes it, when you turn it right side out, it turns nice and smooth. Otherwise, the line of where you cut the fabric 
is shorter than where you've sewn the fabric. So when you turn it right side out, because that's shorter, it wants to pull the fabric together because it's not long enough. It can't stretch around it. And by cutting these curves, when we turn it a right side out, you can stretch that apart and it'll create these little gaps between the slits and that'll make it turn nice and smoothly. So the next step is to turn it right side out. So on the big stocking, this is really, really easy to do. Um, it's a little bit trickier on the smaller one and even trickier because I left myself a really small hole here. I was not paying attention. So got the heel and now I'm going to work my thumbs all the way to the toe at the other end of the stocking. And I'm going to show you a trick for the mini stock, the, the little ornaments. So I've got my thumb down here in the toe of the stocking and I'm going to put my finger on it now and push it through that channel that I just created. So there's the toe coming through. Now I'm just going to grab that and pull it through from the right side. So as long as you can get a thumb into the opening, you can turn it. And you can do that with the small ornaments too, but I also wanted to show you one tool. So I've got a stick here. First of all, I'm just gonna smooth this. I'm just gonna use this to pull, to push all that, those extra bits out, especially where there's a curve. So I'll go down, do the same thing on the main part of the boot. Go back around his heel. All right, so that is all turned right side out and I have this very weird shape now. So I'm gonna take that to the ironing board and I'm gonna press all that flat and I'm really gonna work on smoothing these edges out as I curve, so as I press. So I'm gonna get a nice smooth curve and I'm gonna work all the way around and do that. Before I do that though, I just wanna show you really quickly with the little ornaments so we're kind of staying at the same stage on these guys. Turn them right sides together, layer them up, and then on these guys, you're just gonna start at the top and sew all the way around to the other end, but leave that top open. And here's one that I've done. So I've sewn all the way around that edge. And then this one also, get my thumb in there, and then push my finger through basically do the same thing I did with the big one. But if you cannot get your thumb in that opening, there is a really cool tool. They're called turning tubes, and that's what I'm gonna show you with one more. So I'm gonna press this nicely too when I press the other one. But here is one more version. So this is the Santa version of the stocking. And if you want a fancy tool, it's got a tube and a stick. And the tube goes into the stocking, and then you poke through with the stick. And there we go. So that is turned right side out. So kids especially love using those turning tubes. So if you're making these with a kid, get some turning tubes because they're kind of magical. All right, so I'm gonna press all of these and then I will be back and show you the next step. Okay, you can see I've pressed this nice and neatly so it's nice and flat. And our next step is to deal with this stuffing hole. So I've pressed the seam allowance flat around it. So no matter what I wanna do with it, it's gonna be easy to deal with. If this were a stuffed animal, I would sew that up using ladder stitch, which is completely invisible. If I was doing this with a kid, I would maybe have them sew it up with whip stitch because that is not invisible, but it's still nice and neat and it's a little bit easier to do. But for this, I'm gonna go with even more visible and super easy because this is not the outside of a stuffed animal. It's actually going to be hidden inside the stocking. So what I'm gonna do is take this over to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew 
a little line of stitching right across that opening. And then we just have one more thing to do. All right, so here is how that looks, nice and neat. It is not any kind of an heirloom finish, but again, it's gonna be inside the stocking and you can barely see it. And honestly, if somebody is turning the stocking that you gave them inside out to examine your finishes and tells you that that's not good enough, they don't deserve your stocking. So now we have this very weird shape and it has no openings in it and we have to turn that into the stocking lining and cuff. And this is where some people get a little bit mystified. So you're gonna tuck this lining down into the stocking and we're gonna smooth that as we go. So just kind of pull the two layers apart. They're gonna to wanna to cling together because you just pressed that and cotton likes to cling to itself. But pull that apart and then just start tucking that toe down. So you're just gonna work it down into the toe of the stocking. So basically we're gonna leave the stocking right side out and we're turning the lining inside out, which means we're gonna see the correct side of the lining inside the stocking. Okay, so my thumb's down in here now, I can feel that. So I'm gonna grab that toe and I'm gonna start pulling this out trying to hang it onto that toe while I pull, and I'm just gonna keep pulling this out. And then it gets to a point where it's a little annoying, so I'm just going to flick it like I'm turning a shirt right side out. And there we go. So now it's kind of wadded up in there, so I need that stick again. All right, so I'm just gonna push this down in here and make sure that I'm getting the lining tucked up even with the edge of the stocking. On the big stocking, this is really easy to do because you can fit your whole hand inside, but I can just get my hand partway down that stocking. So that is mostly smoothed out. It'll smooth out even more when I fill it up with goodies. Let me just tuck that a little bit more down in there. All right, I'm gonna give it one more back here. All right, so now we have a fully lined stocking and the last thing to do is just turn that cuff down. There we go. So if you didn't attach a hanging loop while you were sewing it and you want to do that now, just stitch it into that corner. But we have a completely finished stocking, fully lined, contrasting cuff, and you only had to sew one seam all the way around it. So I want to show you before I show you kind of the whole group of them together, just a little bit more detail about these little mini stockings. So I turned that this one right side out after I sewed it together, pressed it flat, and then I just turned this top hem down. I turned it in a little bit and pressed it flat and then turned it in a second time and pressed it flat so I have a nice clean edge in there. Now, on some people's sewing machines, you can fit this in your sewing machine and sew this hem in place by machine. I can do it on my, on my machine, but it barely fits and it's really frustrating and annoying to do. So I'm actually gonna sew this by hand and then I will come back and show you all of the finished pieces. And here are all the finished stockings. This is what you get with one yard of organic cotton sateen. That's what I used. I love the colors print really, really vibrantly on the sateen and um, it also just has a nice shine to it. It's not satin, it doesn't have a satiny kind of shine, but it has a nice a sheen to it rather than a shine. So just as a quick recap, you get five little tree ornament stockings and you get one miniature stocking and then you get one full size stocking. So one yard of fabric has all of the pieces you need to make all of these different stockings. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World. I'll see you next time.